Hello, I'm Tyler Moses. I'm an NX application engineer at CamLogic, and during this demonstration, I will be talking about the Mold Wizard add-on, which can be utilized through the value-based tokens or separately as an add-on. Mold Wizard is a highly automated and fully associative set of applications that will enable users to design molds in significantly less time and in more efficient manners. Every function is organized to promote the most efficient workflow throughout the entire design process. Initialized Project allows you to create new mold design projects or add additional products to an existing project to create a family mold. When creating a new project, you can specify various parameters such as a template assembly, project name, material, and more. When initializing a project, the solid product body becomes a parent of an associatively linked body, allowing for easy replacement of the mold assembly, which will minimize losses. I can now adjust the coordinate system of our mold in a way that will align the desired ejection direction principal part plane, and the part as it will appear in the cavity and core inserts. I will point the z-axis coordinate toward the inside of the model mold. Workpiece command is used to represent the mold core and cavity. I'm using the default defined block, but the workpiece method and dimensions can be modified depending on your project's needs. The check region command can be utilized to determine whether parts can be manufactured by traditional mold processes, such as ejection molding, die casting, sand casting, and more. The calculate tab can select the body to be analyzed, specify the drawing direction, and set calculation options. You can also use the check region command to divide the faces of the product models into cavity and core regions and display part line loops, internal loops, part edges, and incomplete loops, as well as assign undefined faces to the cavity and core. We will alter the cavity and core regions inside of the Define Region tab as we diagnose what faces are undefined and add them to the proper regions. Check and Define Regions can also examine properties for individual faces, properties for the model, solid, or sheet model, and identify sharp corners. Design part surface is a command used to automatically generate a part surface for all parting loop segments. Other functions this command can do include create or delete a parting surface for a selected parting loop segment, as well as identify and edit parting curves or edges. Design parting surface commands can also create and edit guidelines. Inside the define cavity and core command, we will be creating two regions that will define our bodies. This command can also create a new component and trim bodies for any of the new regions you create, or specify a uh, workpiece and a product body when you use the split body type, and suppress the existing parting so you can define new trimming sheets. While using the cavity layout command, we will be creating a 2x2 two two of our workpiece, then auto-centering the positioning of the cavity layout. When working in this command, make sure to design the, the workpiece before adjusting the cavity layout, because the workpiece is a referent object for the cavity position. When adding a cavity, a new instance of the product assembly is being created under the layers node. Moldbase library command is used to add moldbase assemblies to your projects. With these assemblies, you can edit existing templates, register new templates, replace your mold base with others, and more. Each moldbase assembly has specific characteristics that makes it functional for different projects. When adding a, uh, a mold base to your mold design, the standard parts within the mold base can be displayed as symbols. But using symbols rather than the actual parts can actually improve your PC's performance when working with large mold designs. You can replace the symbols with actual part family members when, whenever by using the concept design command. For Team Center integrations for NX, when the mold base is added to your assembly, the part family master model is cloned to, to, to Team Center along with the components inside the family's object attributes. 
For this demonstration, I will only be adding ejection pins, but the standard part management command utilizes the reuse library, which can contain many more parts such as screws, buttons, gears, locks, point patterns, pipe plugs, and others depending on the requirements or needs of your project. Mold Wizard does also provide template parts inside the reuse library, but it is very simple to add more reused parts at, uh, into your environment. When you define the ejector pins from the standard part library, you must select a pin that is longer than, the, than is necessary, so you can adjust to the correct length. This is why I altered the length of the ejector pin to 160 uh, to make sure it was going to pass through the required length, making it easier to select uh, so I can have it constrained to the selected face. You can also trim a used user-defined ejector pin by adding the um underscore user underscore ejector attribute to the ejector pin body, and then saving the user-defined ejector pin. You have the option to unite several bodies to combine them or to sub subtract several workpiece bodies from the overall insert body that encompasses all the individual volumes. For this demonstration, I'm merging the 2x2 two two cavities and cores, which can be displayed under the View Manager Navigator. As you can see, they are under the default name of Combined Core and Combined Cavity. A great feature is having the ability to hide the original workpieces and only display the merged cavities. For the pattern channel command, I will be making a 2D sketch that will represent the center of the channels. I will be using the top plane of the combined cavity for my pattern channel. But if necessary, a custom pin, point or plane can be created if a location is not already defined in your model. Since this is just a demonstration, I won't be very precise on my 2D sketch profile lines. Once the sketch is completed, the channel will be generated with the option to alter the channel diameter with both custom diameter length and diameter listed, which will also adjust the other feature depending on which one is selected. The extend channel command works with the pattern channel command we just previously used. From the dialog box, we will be able to adjust the distance of the channels as well as alter the tip ends to none, angled, and rounded. So for this first extension, I will make the tip end be angled uh, with the default tip angle. For the rest of the channels, I will adjust them so they are butted up to the ends of the workpiece. Now that the extensions have been modified to the proper length, we can create the cooling circuit. For this demonstration, the pattern channel created is very simple. So we will be selecting the intake location, then the user interface will update with arrows for the next direction your channel will flow. As we work along the channels, we will get to our output uh, for the circuit, and using the dialog box, we can see all the fitting points references. From here, we can alter the default options to have the intake and output uh, to the extension plug part families and keep the channel uh, not being utilized with pipe plug. After clicking OK the, uh, on the dialog box, we can see that NX displays the intake and output locations. Concept design command is used to replace the concept design symbols we created with the cooling circuit, with the standard parts that are represented. So, we can start by applying the concept design command to these pipe plugs we kept as default earlier. Next, we can select the extended plug part families that we chose for the intake and the outtake channels. The concept design will stay displayed even when the mold base assembly is displayed. Design fill utilizes the reuse library as well and has many pre-installed or default items. For this demonstration, I will be using the Runner 4 along with a Gate Submarine. I'm starting by adding the pre-installed Runner 4 and I will be going to, into the uh, dialog box and adjusting the length of the base. Then I will adjust the length of all of the runners. Once this is complete, 
we can look into adding the submarine. And what is great about uh, the Forerunner that we just had is that it will automatically add all the submarines to all four of the arms of the runner. Other features I'm not using for this demonstration but will be commonly used for our projects are the pocket and vent commands. After you have finished adding standard parts and other components, you, have, you can use the pocket command to model pockets in dies or mold plates, inserts, and other solid bodies. Pockets are associated to the tool body by default, but can change to become a non-associative to improve performance. You can also create pockets using part family members as tool components. Part family pocket bodies are defined in the MW pocket tool body library. The default parameters used to create vents are defined in the VIN and the VMM spreadsheets, which are located in the installation folders. You can edit the parameters in the dialog box, or you can edit the spreadsheet based on the event uh, design standards. For example, if you wanted to, ex uh, to edit the parameter extend underscore L to automatically extend vent curves, you can predefine that length. Use the preprocess motion command to set and load the kinematic model and mount the sheet metal or plastic part of the die or model of the kinematic model to prepare for your motion simulation. In the kinematic model option, I've only changed the values for the machine stroke A and ejection distance value. Next, on the mount component option, we are able to see everything that is selected for this motion. So let's keep these default selections and try running the simulation using the run simulation command on our mold wizard tab. During the simulation, we will only alter the part interval function to 0.5. This will slow down the speed of the simulation execution. Now we can go back into the pre-process motion command and alter the component mounting choices. We can add the product being molded since we could only see the ejection pin and the machine motion on the first run simulation. We can add three of the four molds being produced. That way we have a reference of before and after adding the product molds. Again, we will open the run simulation command and go through the same process of adjusting the play interval to a value of 0.5. And we can change the view to see the product getting ejected from the simulation. Some of the features and commands that were being displayed during the, that weren't being displayed during this demonstration uh, include feature to cost mold, mold cost, mold design val uh, validation, flow analysis, and many more. Mold cost is one command that I think can be very beneficial to any company utilizing Mold Wizard add-on. The mold cost feature allows you to generate reports in Excel that can show so much valuable information. Some of the values that are being analyzed include cost, time, and other valuable information, which all can be customized to fit your customer's requirements. Mold Wizard com with Excel sheets for the default report, but other spreadsheets can be created and added to the selectable options to choose from inside the mold cost command. For further assistance, please reach out to your account rep with any further questions that you may have. If you are unsure who to contact, please complete the contact us page on our website at canlogic.com. A member of our team will reach out to you answering any of your questions. Thank you.